Hi, this is Matt with Direct Impact Solutions and also AppWorks, and uh, we just merged our companies. And this is going to be a FileMaker Basics video on relationship design, and this one is going to be on many-to-many -many relationships. So there's another video that I made about one-to-many relationships, and that's these two examples here, company-to-person and invoice to invoice line item. So we can briefly look at those. And so basically that's um, the ability to, to look at a company record and to see people working there. And I don't have any, uh, for example, and none of them are showing up. So for example, down here, you could have like Matt and John and you know Carrie are all working for this company. Okay, so then there's also an example of the invoice to invoice line item where a given invoice can have any number of line items on it. So this is one that was in our example that shows four and does the math. Okay, now what if you want a many to many relationship? How does that work? How is that different? So let's take a look. So in our relationship graph, we can see our two one to many's. And the way that this works is with a primary key and a foreign key. So in the company table, if we click on the little invoice or the uh, relationship uh, uh, object in the middle, that brings up this window. This is by far the best window to take a look at how your relationships work because it shows you all of the fields in both tables. So in the company to person relationship, we use the primary key, the company ID over here in the company table, and the foreign key, which is uh, a field in the person table, that stores the company ID for any number of people who work at that company. And so over here, it's unique. And so only one company would ever have the same ID. One, two, three, four, five exists for exactly in only one company. But over here, if there's five people who work at that company, they're all going to have the company ID of one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and when the same exact thing exists over here in the invoice to invoice line item, because obviously an invoice can have any number of line items. Now, what if we want to link um, a product to the invoice line item? So like in the invoice line item table, we have an ID here for the product. Um, or do we? Well, we can make that. And we, oh yeah, it's actually over here, invoice product, ID product. So um, so if we want to link uh, the, the invoice line item table to the product table, we can just drag. Now, here's a really good tip in FileMaker. Just drag any field to any field. It doesn't really matter how you join it. And then hit Control-O or Command-O or hit, uh, or double-click this guy. And it opens up the, the edit relationship dialog, which is, as I said a minute ago, by far the most useful way to edit relationships. And here we're going to choose ID of the product to ID. And then click Change. That will update down here. In this case, we don't actually want to be able to create any new product records from a uh, invoice line item, which is different than what we did here, because you really would want to make a new invoice line item when you're sitting at an invoice but the product table should be a little bit more formal in its approach of adding a new product to your system. Okay, now this is now a many-to-many -many relationship um, because um, there can be many invoices and many products. And the way that they join life is in this join table. So the invoice line item table a minute ago was part of a one-to-many -to relationship, and it really still is. And now it's uh, the middle in the middle between these two other ones. So, and this actually is many to, is one to many as well. So one product can be sold any number of times to any number of invoices. And so this is really uh, I want to pause here and, and say it one more time. The nature of a many to many relationship is really two one to many relationships, and it's from the ones are on the outsides both pointing to the many in the middle. So in other words, one to many in this direction, left to right from invoice to invoice line, and one to many in this direction from product to invoice line. So that is that is one way that you can have a, a very, very common way that you would find a many to many relationship. Let's see how this will actually play. So we're gonna modify our screen here a little bit, and I'm gonna add the um, product ID here. So I'll just move these fields over. And on item, I want to put the product ID. 
Actually, that probably should be the leftmost field, shouldn't it? So let's move that over here. Using some of my good tips for moving things around here. Uh, option drag to make a copy. You can select multiple things. Uh, you can unselect them with shift key. There's a lot of good uh, file maker supports a lot of really convenient ways to move items around to layout. Okay, so I'll call that product. Now one of these ones actually has an ID in it, but let's open up another window and take a look at like my product table. And so I have just a handful of them in here. Let's put them in table view so we can see them all. So I have a product number eight, which is called a Gizmotech sit-stand desk, 600 cost, $1,000. Okay, so if I were to add a new line item on um, this invoice and I wanna put in product ID number eight, this will not quite work yet, but let's talk about what we need to do to make this work. Okay, so um, it didn't work because uh, why? So I have the relationship drawn in, but what I don't yet have is I don't have any kind of a lookup or any kind of a way to grab the information uh, when I make a new line item in this table. So um, we need to take a look at how that will flow. So if I actually were to show this and say, rather than showing me the item name locally stored in the invoice line table, but show the item name in the products table, which is the item right here, then when I put an eight, it's actually gonna correctly relate to that record, which is great. But just in case the product name will change over time, I wanna know the original name. So in this case, I'm actually storing a couple of redundant bits of data, and that includes the item name um, and the unit price. And so I'm gonna go to um, back to my uh, relationship graph, and then I'm gonna go over to fields. And then in my invoice line item table, I'm gonna set a couple of defaults. So item is gonna now be, I can either use a calculation or a lookup. Lookups are really old in FileMaker and they don't really have many places where it's useful, but this is one. Um, so I can click lookup and um, then from the invoice line table, I'm gonna look up uh, the product and I'm gonna grab and store the item name. So that ex you can do that exact same thing with an auto enter calculation. And we're gonna do that on the unit price just so you can see it's a little bit different. So on unit price, rather than using the lookup function, I'm gonna use the calculation function. And I'm gonna say, starting from an invoice line, go to product and grab the price. So not the cost, but the sale price. And then there's a couple of extra checkboxes we get here when you do it with a calculation. Um, and that is to, to not replace auto enter, um, which we want to uncheck. And then this one down here would prevent it from being modified, which we do want to allow, allow it to be modified. So you can override the price. And then one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to default to quantity of one, just by putting a one in here. So we've made three changes here on this to, to look up our product. So now if I were to um, add another, I'll go to another invoice and I'm going to add line M seven, a Thorin's record player. What's going to happen is it's going to bring in more bits of data. And it did. So it brought in the item name, the quantity, and the unit price. So I can add, I'll go to a few more invoices and I'll add on all these ones like item number seven, 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 eight, two, three, three, Okay, so what's happening here is I'm just kind of messing with a bunch of invoices and there I'll show you why here in a minute. Um, because this is the real beauty uh, that I, if, I, if there's one thing that I want you to understand more than anything about a many-to-many -many relationship, this will be it coming up right now. And that is the bi-directional nature of how it shows you your data. So we just got with a very small amount of effort, the ability to take a look at an invoice and add any kind of a product to it um, um, by the ID of the product. But what about if I wanna find out how often the product has been sold? So I'm gonna change this product back to form view. And remember on our graph, our relationship graph, we have a relationship from product to invoice. So this works in both directions. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show from the product table a portal showing invoice line data. Uh, and I'll add that right now. So I'll just use my portal tool, drag down here. And I want to show from the invoice line table, I want to see the um, I already know the item. I guess I want to know the quantity and the unit price, which would show me any kind of an override. And you know, there might be some other things that I also want to see, like maybe the invoice number. And this is kind of cool. I can actually go to the invoice table, which is uh, two tables away on the graph, and show the invoice date and invoice number. Um, so now I'll choose those, those fields. And then if I were to look at a product like product number eight, which I sold a bunch of times, yeah, there, there are more my examples, right? So invoice um, 102, it actually doesn't have a price. And here we go. So this one, seven, I actually put on multiple different invoices. So, and this is, this is um, connected in a lot of ways, right? So if I take a look at, uh, it's actually connected both directions. So if I change it in either place, it's going to update my record. Um, so for example, let's, let's go to item. So one of the ones I haven't yet used is item six. So if I go to another invoice and I add uh, item six, we'll see it immediately appear in both places. If I were to change my price, so I'm going to sell this one not for 180, but for 150, give a discount on it. And then I'll add item six to another invoice as well. So now I have it on two different invoices at two different prices. Over here on the product page, I can see that it was sold for two different prices, 150 and 180. Over here, it's not showing um, as a number, so I probably want to uh, use my data tab here and format this as currency. And then with uh, two decimal places. And then when I look at it, it shows more clearly as a uh, dollar amount. So also, if I were to change it here to like 140, it's going to immediately change over here as well. So it's the same. It's the same data. So both places are actually modifying the invoice align data. So that is a really classic example of a one to many. And now we're going to take it up a little bit of a notch. We're going to connect these two to these three. So what I'm going to do is, um, and I don't really have to drag them over here, but I'm going to do that. Again, I'm going to drag anything to anything over here. I'm going to double click on this. And I'm going to link the correct fields over here, which is the company ID to the company ID between the person. Uh, you know what? I'm actually doing this wrong. This needs to go uh, at one different level. I'm going to change that. So I'll delete this relationship by clicking on it and delete. Invoices don't attach to person records. They attach to company records. So this is going to be company ID to company ID. So now the graph kind of looks like that. So company is the parent, and it has two child records, person and invoice. That's because a given company can have any number of people who work there, and a given company can have any number of invoices. An invoice can have any number of line items, and a line item cannot have any number of products, but a product can have any number of line items, because remember, this is that join table in the middle. So now we have basically too many too many relationships. So now basically the invoice table has become a join table in between company and invoice line. It's a little bit different though because of the one to many nature, but this is a very, very common structure for a business database. And let's see how it works. So what this gives me is the ability to look up from the invoice to the company. And so I can put the name of the company uh, right on the layout here. And there we go. I can see this invoice is for that company. And then also, if I'm looking at the company, I can look down into the invoices. So I'll show three people. And I'm going to add another portal here for invoices. And I'll choose invoices, not invoice line. And then I want to see the date, the invoice ID, or the friendly number, the uh, total and maybe the first product so the first the, the item number of the first product 
So if I go to browse, I will now see that work, right? So this is beautiful. This is just what I want. So I can, I, I get that bi-directional nature of the relationship from a pretty simple structure. D definitely some work to do on the layout, but it's pretty solid. So that is the basics of many-to-many -many relationships with FileMaker. Thanks for your time.